Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Science and Technology Minister Naledi Pandor highlighted her commitment to further stimulating innovation in South Africa at the inaugural Innovation Bridge this week. Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell tells us more. Hi Keith. So tell us, what is the Innovation Bridge and how did the event come about? Well, the Innovation Bridge was created, uh, it, it stemmed from a report submitted in 2011 about innovation in South Africa. It's cre it was created specifically to assist innovators in South Africa by providing a platform where innovators could meet on the one hand with venture capitalists, not necessarily locals, uh, there were some American venture capitalists there, and with uh, institutions and people who could provide uh, important assistance uh, and advice, um, technical assistance, business assistance, financial advice, that kind of thing. Uh, so that was why it was put together and it was run over two days and the, the initial impressions I have is that it was a highly successful event. Uh, there were a number of uh, projects on display uh, there are a large number of universities present demonstrating uh, innovations that their researchers are coming up with and there are a number of uh, technology companies also on this uh, also with uh, exhibits uh, showing what they've been doing uh, and as I say there were uh, among the attendees who were potential investors and potential sources of advice and assistance to innovators and for, to start up companies. And Naledi Pondor was present and she discussed her views on the legal frameworks and the legislation impacting the innovators in South Africa. What were her thoughts? Well, uh, the, the, the Department of Science and Technology is an ardent supporter of innovation in South Africa and uh, seeks to promote it. Now, Innovation is affected uh, very substantially uh, by all sorts of uh, uh, things, including tax laws, uh, regulations, uh, and there are many areas that can have unexpected or unintended effects on innovation, either undermining it or promoting it. And so one of the key things that uh, the Department of Science and Technology is doing, and uh, Minister Pandor, like her predecessor, uh, is uh, enthusiastic about, is getting across to the rest of government the uh, consequences in terms of stimulating or curtailing innovation of policies in other areas, most obviously. Uh, in terms of legal frameworks and, and financial matters, fiscal matters such as taxation. Um, there is a, an Intellectual Property uh, Act, which is no, un, uh, now being subject to an amendment process, and the Department of Science and Technology and Minister Pandor are seeking to make certain that these amendments uh, help innovation and do not hinder it. And there have been other things like um, the establishment of an agency, uh, the National Intellectual Property Management Organization, or NIPMO, uh, to assist innovators with questions of intellectual property. Because the, there are a number of matters uh, of concern to local innovators. The DST has carried out, has carried out uh, I think, more than one survey of innovators to uh, identify the issues that, and the problems they face. And w w there, are, there are matters concerning patent law. And what especially uh, uh, concerns them is the cost in South Africa of protecting intellectual property. And that's something the minister and the department would like to address. I should perhaps also point out, obviously, the Innovation Bridge itself is an initiative to help innovators. And DST hopes to hold it every two years from now on. And how did speakers recommend that innovators go ahead and market themselves to South Africa and the world? 
Well, there, there were various uh, presentations. Uh, there was a, a panel discussion of people who successfully started their own businesses in which they offered uh, their experiences and uh, you know what not to do. Uh, there was a, a presentation by Alan Knott Craig Jr., who's the CEO of Project Iceway, which is aimed at providing free Wi-Fi uh, in the poor areas, urban areas of South Africa, uh, who pointed out that uh, when dealing with especially local government, uh, if you're in the private sector, you, you've got to realize that uh, most most of the people he's met in local government are there to do some good, to make a difference for people. Uh, but they have one heck of a difficult job. And therefore it's necessary to show some respect because they have a tough job and they they have a better idea of what's happening in, in their areas than uh, business offering services or advice does. Uh, and also, some basic uh, things like if you're working with government, always make certain the paperwork is done properly and correctly because, as he pointed out, uh, you send the wrong invoice to a private sector client, it's embarrassing. You send the wrong invoice to a government client and you can face criminal prosecution uh, because it'll be seen by the officials an attempt as fraud. Uh, now, you may be able to establish that was just a, an honest mistake, but the fact of the matter is you risk an official investigation. Uh, very different uh, was uh, advice from an American venture capitalist called Roman Kikta. And he pointed out that the most successful innovators, you know, uh, giant names of giants innovation was like Steve Jobs and uh, Elon Musk, who of course, uh, has strong South African connection, uh, that they succeeded by selling, as he put it, selling the dream, not the details. They didn't sell their technology. They sold the dream, the dream of what the technology would do. And that is how they succeeded. And you're saying that um, when you start off, it seems a lot easier to sell the details. This whiz bang can do this in amount of whatever in y seconds or whatever. Uh, but that selling the dream works better. Once you have learned what you've got, it, it's difficult to learn to sell the dream, but once you have mastered that art, you're then in a stronger position because, as he said, it's easier to captivate people than convince them. And that uh, venture capitalists, he said, want to fall in love. They want to be swept off their feet by the next new idea. And so uh, he was kind of arguing, don't focus in on the micro level of what your product does sell the dream of what your product will do for the consumer and do for society. And that's the way to go, basically. Thanks, Keith. Sounds like a very interesting event. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.